Um, you know what I couldn't help thinking about while watching the battle sequence this week? What's that? With the horses was when we were playing Burnout 3 this weekend. <laughs> Just like things smashing into each other and yeah. they fly off. That was the horse the version of that car crash game? Yeah, yeah. I would actually play that game. Joust, horse joust burnout out. takedown? <laughs> joust yeah. out takedown. <laughs> There's an obscure video game reference to kick off this week's Polite Fight. I am John Tatey, your AV Club Editor-in-Chief, joined as always by Gus Spellman, video editor extraordinaire. And we are here to talk about the Battle of the Bastards, Bastard finally. Bowl, yeah. Oh, big. Is there any other show you can think of where the second to last episode was always the biggest deal of the season? It seems like a Game of Thrones thing. Buffy season four does that, but I can't think of any, that any was show good. where That was good like... of you to come up with even one, Buffy season four. I'll take it. Let's get right into it with this battle scene. Just to me, the most thoughtfully... Um, cinematographized, uh, the most thoughtfully shot sequence in the whole season, maybe in the whole show. but It's definitely one of the highlights. Um, but I, th I think if we talked about every single thing they do, we would we would be here, be all, here day. all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to look at three moments that I think we can use to track uh, the way that they're keeping us engaged and keeping those stakes right. high. Right. Um, and those are the three moments where John almost, or they make you think, is John going to die here? Right. Um, He's so the thread that makes this sequence cohere, right? right? Because, yes, there's mayhem everywhere. We're tr kind of following all of it, but he's the center of, of, of attention. Yes, there's the three moments. There's the one where the Bolton army is charging at him and he's alone. Then there's one sort of more random one where he is in the midst of the fray and somebody comes up behind him and almost chops his head off. And then there's the part where he almost gets buried alive. And the way that he escapes is different each time, but what I think is key is that the show sells that escape to us in a different way with different cinematic techniques every time. And I think it's that variation that helps keep this battle interesting for 18 minutes. The first one, we have this very still wide shot, right? It's this one take. And then we and they have, let the music come up. They let you the, know, music the music come up. The music takes control. And that's really, I think, what tricks you is that the music becomes the most important Good part point. of the, the information you're receiving, Good basically. Point. feels like we're watching sort of the slow mo. It feels like the finale of a, of a war, tragic war epic mm -hmm. or something, right? And then the way that they save him is to cut away to a different shot that shows you new information that his army is right behind him. That saves his life. Right. So that's salvation number one. Mm -hmm. Salvation number two is this long take. This could have very easily been a shaky cam mess where it's just disorienting. It's disorienting you a little bit, but it's also following a track through mm -hmm. the battlefield that feels, it's very smooth in that, in this direction, it's right? Easy this, to, it's easy to understand what's happening. There's a lot happening, but it's all easy it's to understand. It's all easy to understand because it's so nicely choreographed. And we have also this two dimensional battle now. And eventually at the end of the take, someone finally comes up behind him and it looks like they're actually gonna take him out because he can't see them at all. And then Deus Ex, other horse, he gets smashed burnout style. Um, <laughs> so that's salvation number two. The first time they're cutting to a surprise, the second time they're giving you one long take that's gone on forever and then surprising you with something coming from out of frame. Then the third time they switch the strategy up completely. It's lots of different shots. And it is really disorienting for him climbing out of the pile, but it makes it feel because it's visceral you're not really you're not really right. you don't need to understand the right. the action you only need to understand the effect of what's going on on John really his gasping is so vivid the sound editing is fantastic in that sequence there yeah in fact there was a comment about the sound design I'm Giovanni said uh, that scene was intense. I literally felt like I was suffocating. Uh, watch it yeah. again and listen to the sounds he is hearing getting muffled as he sinks deeper under the pile of dead bodies. <laughs> Really effective point of view setting through the sound design. Mm -hmm. And there's it's clear that there's no real way. He's so closed in. There's no place that help could really come from. So this is the point where John has to save himself. The other two times he's been saved basically by luck. Right. Giving him that small personal victory and making him really earn that one as opposed to the other ones gives you a sort of triumphant feel and I think it's key that they do that right before the actual deus ex machina from, for this whole battle scene comes in when the Knights of the Vale come in. This is right before that, so it still feels like John is taking part in the victory yeah, instead of yeah. just 
completely being saved, which I think would not have been as satisfying. Good point, good point. Just a, a tour de force here, and I love that they mix the techniques and they do it in a progression, so you really feel through the cinematography the battle falling apart mm -hmm. for Jon Snow's army. You know, the, what strikes me in terms of the storytelling about that last climb out of the dead bodies is before the battle, we have this scene with Melisandre where he tells her, hey, don't revive me. Mm -hmm. And then we see in the, when he's climbing out of the pile, I mean, he's literally rising from the dead, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that fight, that climb to the top was so important and the gasping, it's just him exerting the will to live, the will to take his next breath. We needed to see that, not just in terms of making making it so that John has some agency in this battle, mm -hmm. but also in terms of seeing some character turn with it. Yeah, and in fact, Wolfman Jew in the comments, after coming back from the dead, now he's literally coming back from the dead because he got buried alive under a mountain of corpses. Totally agree, and Wolfman then Jew. Anonymous 37 replied to him and said, well, Wolfman Jew in Polite Fight makes that exact same point, but with video clips, you should feel free to take a victory lap in the comments section. There you go, take your victory so, lap. But let's talk about the other half of this episode mm -hmm. in Marine. Finally, some good stuff over there, I thought. Yeah, right? I mean, I feel like the real Tyrion's back now. But my favorite uh, scene in Marine was actually not the, the battles, but the throne room. And I, this is kind of wrapping up this thread that we've been talking mm -hmm. about all season. We've always come back to the throne room because clearly the show loves this space. Mm -hmm. um, and they like the dynamic of height. It's much more interesting that in that way than the King's Landing throne room, wouldn't you say? The King's Landing one is sort of all about, like it's an open court, so it's all about other people watching the drama of the main characters play out. You're seeing like, like the that. world's perspective a little bit. When they want a scene where everybody's seeing somebody's humiliation or downfall or whatever, they put it in the throne room. When whereas, it's like at King's Landing. Love that. And whereas this throne room is more about power negotiations, yes. right? Which is it's why private. Yeah. Well, they have all the these varying heights here. This uh, scene begins with Tyrion talking to Theon about, oh, you've made all these jokes about dwarfs uh, over mm -hmm. the years. He quite pointedly says it as he's up on this top rise. Right, right. right? Looking he's down. Looking down a little bit. And the unspoken dynamic of it is, look at me now. Mm -hmm. I'm on top and you are the supplicant to this mm -hmm. throne. I love that. And I also, you mentioned something about what Danny, how Danny uses the space here that I also like. I mean, we've seen so many variations, right? We've seen Varys down at the bottom with somebody. We've seen Tyrion looking down at somebody. We've seen somebody coming up to Tyrion and Varys's level. And now we've got somebody who's, they start in the middle and Danny comes down, even though she starts up, comes down to meet them there and shake with them there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it shows you that this is going to be kind of an equal partnership. Obviously, Danny has the power. That's yeah. why she starts up top, and she's the one who can choose to come down to them. Right. But they end up in the same place, and it makes you feel like, yeah, these guys are really on the same page. It's a signal of humility both to Yara and, I think, to the viewer to show mm -hmm. us a little bit about how Danny is exercising the uh, reins of power more responsibly and in mm -hmm. less of a hot-headed manner. What struck me the most about this scene, and I just love this, is the colors we see on screen. Mm -hmm. Throughout Throughout the season, the throne room, like much of Marine, has been very orange. Right? It's always dim, warm light. Right. And now in this scene, we have such a nice mix of the blues that you mm -hmm. really have not come out in the throne room mm -hmm. sort of trim and trappings here. This mix of blue and gold, this grayish blue, which is the Greyjoy's color, quite mm -hmm. aptly, and the golds that tend to surround Daenerys. Even in the set and in the coloring of the surroundings, you get a sense of this alliance that's forming. Really smart. I mean, what set have they used to more effect than the throne room? I think they really enjoy figuring out the blocking for the mm -hmm. scenes here. I'm sad they're going to have to leave at some point, I guess. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, great episode. We'll be back one more time next one week. One more time, oh, yeah. I can't believe we're almost at the end of the season. It went by so fast um, because we love doing Polite Fight. Hope you love watching. Thank you for tuning in or doing whatever you do on the internet. For Gus Spellman, I'm John Tatey. See you next week. So long for now. Bye, guys.